Whew. Longest recording of making a graph ever in my life. Welcome back there, students. It's time for more flip class. Yay. Today, we're going to talk about how to graph. Huzzah, my favorite, making graphs. You know, to visualize the data. So let's go ahead and get into it. Whenever you're making a graph, make sure you have available for you some nice, sweet graph paper. You can easily uh, just download some from the internet. If you do an image search for graph paper, just make sure it's a pretty decent high resolution image. That being said, making graphs by hand on the Chromebook is gonna be super duper annoying. So, probably better to uh, just get yourself some nice graph paper and go to town. If you're making bar graphs, regular line notebook paper would work in a pinch, or you can always just download some of this and print it. However, there's some important information you need to remember when you're doing uh, any graphing. Remember, when you're graphing on a scatter point, that's, that's this, a scatter plot, your, your data goes in pairs. So there's always two numbers, right? An, an X coordinate and a Y coordinate. So if we're gonna graph the point two, five through an over two, one, two, up five, one, two, three, four, five. There's that point right there. Yay, go us, how fun. Every single graph needs some kind of title. What's the title on the graph? Maybe you're not sure. Don't worry, youths, I got your back. Always use Y versus X, that's a great title. How great of a title? Uh, the best title. In fact, uh, I would propose to you that any graph that has a title of anything other than Y versus X is, is trying to convince you of something. They're trying, to, they're trying to say, hey, look at this relationship we found in the data, when the relationship really should just be Y versus X. For example, on this graph here, if we're graphing this data, and we know that the number of foxes is depending on the number of mice, then we'd make our graph with the title Y versus X or number of foxes versus number of mice. And you write that at the top. Now it's okay that the title goes a little bit onto the graph if you have more room up here, like I guess I could have done it up there in the blackness, that would have been just fine. And we just won't use these lines here when we make our graph, that way the data doesn't get all mushed up in there. There's our title taken care of, Y versus X. Your axes also need to have labels on them. Every graph always gets labels on the axes. Super important there. So on this graph, remember it's Y versus X, so on the Y axis, that's the up and downy karate chopping axis, we're gonna write number of foxes, and on the X axis, we're going to write number of mice. Do it sideways so it's nice, give yourself plenty of room, right? And over here, we're gonna go down in the blackness, number of the sensor. That says number of, my, well, I mean, I know it says number of scribbles, but it says number of mice. So number of foxes on the y-axis versus number of mice on the x-axis. In addition to having labels, your axes will also need to have scales, right? You know, the, the numbers that you write on there, they'll let us know how much each number is worth. That is also crucial. And to do that, we need to know some more things. We need to know the range of our data. What's the biggest number? What's the smallest number? We need to know the number of lines on the graph that we're using. Now on this graph box, remember, I'm not gonna use these two, uh, three lines at the top because I, I don't wanna interfere with the title with my data plotting. So right here, if we have this for our data, there's actually a really nice little cheat sheet that we can use to figure out all those things. For the independent variable, that's the one that always goes on the x-axis. In this case, we're saying that the number of mice is what's affecting the number of foxes. Kind of makes sense, right? If there's more mice for the fox to eat, maybe there will be more foxes. The number of mice, that's our independent variable, goes on the x-axis. The independent variable always goes on the x-axis unless you are specifically told otherwise. So we've got the number of mice, we find our biggest number, which is 115. Now the 115 happens twice, we still only need to write it once, right here in the box, 115. And then we find our smallest number, a mere 55. A mere 55, so we'll put 55 down here, as our minimum number. Again, 55, pretty far 
from zero, so I'm not gonna go down to zero there. I'm not gonna go down to zero there. Because we said no. Then we just use our handy dandy uncalculatrice and we take 115 minus 55. We double check the numbers to make sure there's not a smaller or a bigger one hiding in there so we don't have to do this all over again. We get a range of 60. Get a range of 60. So just move that sucker down there. Range O 60, how fun. We have our number of lines, we're gonna count them. We got, we don't count the first one. We got one, two, three, four, <laughs> 20 lines, we have 20 lines. So we write right here, uh, 20 lines. 20 lineos para esta gráfica. We have 20 lines, we have 60, 60 divided by 20 or six divided by two. That is a scale of a three. Now I'm not too fearful of counting by threes. Definitely better than counting by 0.64. So I'm just gonna go ahead and leave that adjusted scale as three. If you wanted to count by fives, that would actually probably be okay. That wouldn't waste too much space over here. You could not count by twos though, because two is smaller than three. You can only count by a rounded up number. Must be bigger, not smaller. Must be bigger, not smaller. So here we go. We'll start at our smallest number, which is uh, ooh, 55. So that will start right here because that's our minimum. We said we're starting at 55, not zero. So we'll start right here, that's 55, and then we're gonna go up by three. 55 plus three is 58. So I'd write 58 right there. Now, if you're a little bit squeamish about counting by threes, and you don't wanna waste all the space over here from counting by fives, check this trick out. You just get here on my friend and yours, uncalculatrice. We clear it out, we start at 55. We add three, 55 plus three, we hit enter. 58, like I said, you hit enter again, boom, now we know that number is 61. So then we label it 61. And when you want the next line, you just hit enter again. So that line's 64, we hit enter again, and that line's 67. So we write down 67. That's not too bad. Not too bad at all, especially if you don't have to uh, continuously switch tools on your screen to be able to accommodate for that. So 67 plus three would be 70, but I ain't got room to write no 70, so I'm just gonna go to the next one. That would be 73 on that line right there. Then 76, and then 79. Then uh, 79, 80, 81. Oh, look, counting on my fingers because I'm not scared. And then this one would be 85. Then 88. And then 91. Plus three would be 94, plus three would be 97. Plus three more would be a hundy, hundy right there. This one though, 103. 106, 109 right there. Definitely don't have room for 112, but look, moose and squirrel, I got room for 115 right up in there. How nice. That is our scale for our independent variable, that wasn't so bad. Now we do the same thing for my friend and yours, the dependent variable. This one should be a lot smaller numbers because you'll notice our biggest number over here for our dependent variable is 14. Remember, our smallest number is three. To find our range, again, we're going to subtract the smallest number from the biggest number, so subtract 14 minus 13 gives us 11. Now we gotta count them lines, and if you're doing it like this one, You'll notice we're not gonna use these top three lines. However, I will tell you, if you're using this graph picture that I gave you, there's 20 lines on each side, but we're not gonna use those top three, so we better uh, just double check that we have 17 lines and count them. Again, we're not gonna count the first one. We start here, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 lines. Fun. Then, oh, we're gonna do a little bit of dividiones, 11 divided by 17. I wonder what that's gonna end up being. Probably a small number that I probably won't wanna count by, but we'll do it anyway, just for funsies. So we take 11, our range, divided by 17, our number of lines, that gives us 0.64. 
Okay, don't worry, we don't have to count by that, but we do have to write it down here. So 0 0.64. This 0 0.64, that represents the smallest number we could count by and still be able to fit in all of our data points if we were starting at three. Because three is so close to zero, we could start at zero, but then you have to use zero as your minimum we're sticking with three as our minimum because I've already written all these things and done all this math and I don't want to do it again. You do not have to count by 0.64. What? That line would be three and then that line would be uh, 3.64 and then that line would be, would, would be the, what, four? 4.28 and then that line would be some other thing I don't even want to think about. Uh, no. <laughs> To that I say. Instead, we're going to use our adjusted scale powers. We're going to round this number up to something we want to count by. I suggest one, because everything else is going to be decimal and still crappy to count by. This is a lot closer to 0.5 or one half than it is to one, but you cannot use 0.5 as your adjusted scale. We couldn't even use 0.6 as our adjusted scale. This is the smallest the number could possibly be. When you're finding your adjusted scale, you have to round up. We could get 0.1 right here, and we would still have to round that up. This could have been 0 0.4, and if you want to go by whole numbers, we still have to round all the way up to one, all right? You don't, you don't follow your rounding number, round down to zero. I don't know how you count by zero. When you do your adjusted scale, you must round up. However, counting by ones, nice and easy, let's knock this sucker out. Remember, this bottom line has to be our lowest value, our minimum, that's three. If you wanted to go for zero, you wouldn't have a range of 11. You wouldn't have a range of 11. Instead, you have a range of 14 minus zero, which is 14. So if you want to start at zero for the scale or for any scale, just remember, you got to put that in as your minimum. Otherwise, you want to have the right range. Three, four, five, six, seven. That's our biggest number. So we're, we're good to go. We could keep numbering. The whole point of this is to not have all this ugly leftover space, but 0.64, not much you can do about it. Then it is time to plot the dots. We'll just go right down the table. Keep in mind, this table is backwards from normally how you do the table, okay? You know, over 75 and up to three, which is right, um, yeah, not bad. I like to check them off. Then we got, uh, go over to 90, up to five. So there's five, over here is 91, that's 88. So a 90 will be sort of in between them. 90 and five, so we come up here to the five. Put a nice dot right there, that looks pretty good. Again, check them off so I don't lose track of which ones I've plotted, which ones I haven't. We're going all the way over to a 115. <laughs> Fifty-five and seven, the number that I missed the first time I numbered this, so I had to do it again. That was fun, not. This time though, we're going up to 11 because this one goes to 11. Some go to 10, this one goes to 11. And there we have some nice, beautiful, majestic points. You now have two options for how you would like to uh, handle the rest of the graph, because this sort of shows a trend, but it's also sort of a mess. This is where you need to check the instructions. If the instructions say to draw a line connecting all the dots, then that is what we will do. And you need to make sure you're working from left to right. It's not, just, it's not just like a constellation where you just get to pick out the shape you want. So we're going from left to right, so the first point goes from there to there, bloop, draw a line, then that one's next, bloop, 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 what do we do with these? That's easy, go bloop and then bloop. Or you could go bloop and then dupe, go down. Either way, this is an okay looking line. And you can see it does, the lines really help show us a trend that so the middle, the medium seems to be a good number. When there were too many mice, there weren't quite as many uh, foxes, and, but when there were more foxes, we had more mice. So it seems to be we have the highest in the middle. The other option would be if you were asked to draw a trend line. Now a trend line on this one's gonna be a little ugly because we're keeping it linear, but basically you need to draw a line that shows the average of these points. It's really hard to do with all these other lines in the way, but 
I'm feeling brave if you're feeling brave. So let's do it. Uh, basically, we got some points up here, we got some points over here, but for the most part, we see a general trend of the data going like this. Some points above, some points below. So we just eyeball ourselves a trend line that's sort of like that. There it is, nice red trend line. Again, with the data being this far out, I would not recommend a trend line for this graph, but if you are asked or forced to draw a trend line, that's more or less where I would draw it. I'll bet Excel would agree with me. If not, if you don't believe me, go ahead, take this data, put it in a Google Sheets, make yourself a graph and insert trend line linear. Let's see how it looks, but my guess is it'll be about there. Connecting the dots is also a good strategy. Just make sure you have to connect them in order from left to right. That, Moose and Squirrel, is how you graph. However, I'm just gonna wing it. It's not like math is letting me down any other times on this video. There's a message to editing Patterson, not uh, this, not you, and cut this out. But 